Hi, this is the Tuesday evening update on Hurricane Laura. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult your local officials, the National Hurricane Center, and your National Weather Service office for the best information for your location. We continue to watch Laura now trekking west-northwest away from Cuba and across the Gulf of Mexico, and this journey will continue, bringing it eventually to a landfall somewhere near the Texas-Louisiana border late Wednesday night or overnight Wednesday night. We can see the remnants of Marco here as well near the Louisiana coastline, not expected to have a significant impact on Laura. And uh, this will be the focus now for the next 36 hours. We can see kind of an ominous look developing on satellite this afternoon as we see a donut shape with an eye beginning to show up on visible satellite imagery. And if we look in at the close up shot, what we've had since the storm left Cuba is more of an asymmetric storm, at least until very recent hours, where most of the thunderstorms were on the east side with the strongest wind and occasionally curling around the north side. We're only just now in the last couple of hours getting some wrapping around into the southwestern quadrant of this thunderstorm activity with a new convective burst in the southern side of the center. And this is starting to form what may be uh, the first time we're seeing an eye wall like structure really showing up here. And you can see it's a rather broad one, rather large eye hiding under here, beginning to pop out on satellite imagery. Now it's not entirely clear how strong this is at the precise moment because the last plane data we have is from about 9 or 10 a.m. Central Time, and after that we started having data issues with the aircraft. So it's unclear after this pressure reading of 991 millibars how strong the storm has become in the last five to six hours. But we will hopefully have a new plane in there in a couple of hours following this video, and we'll get some new data. What the plane did find though this morning is that we had again that asymmetric wind field, strong winds here on the east side and the north side, but much weaker winds out of the north on the western side of the storm and what we're kind of waiting for here is for the storm to eventually complete that inner core wrap this strong wind all the way around into a more complete ring around the center and that becomes the eye wall and we may be seeing the beginnings of that process now as satellite trends have shown more of that classic look with an eye-like feature in the center and more of a complete ring of thunderstorms this afternoon Now, as far as the hindrances that we talked about for Laura, we've had the mid-level shear continuing out of the northerly direction, and we could still tell that that was there this morning. However, we've seen a trend toward a slightly broader inner core structure for Laura, so that the strongest winds are forming a ring that is rather wide, and you can see this eye is somewhat large here. Larger vortices are more resilient in the face of shear, and it's already becoming evident on satellite imagery that LoRa is no longer being negatively impacted by the shear like it was yesterday, and this influence is likely to decrease over the next 24 hours anyway, with the shear probably decreasing in magnitude somewhat. So we're not expecting the shear to limit LoRa any longer, and whatever negative impact it had on the storm has likely ended at this point. The other hindrance we talked about was the slight cool wake of water from Hurricane Marco that had left a strip of slightly cooler water likely about in here over the Gulf of Mexico because there was a cooler subsurface eddy west of the loop current and Marco was able to churn up a little bit of cooler water. Not cold, but just a little cooler. And Laura had been ingesting some of the ocean fluxes from that cooler water earlier today. It's unclear whether that really negatively impacted the storm, but in any case, Laura is now moving beyond that strip of cooler water and everything from here on out is warm and deep and for a developing hurricane that is a a positive sign for intensification unfortunately as the ocean is quite potent for a developing strong to major hurricane so we're expecting that all lights are probably green for laura to continue intensifying tonight it may still be a gradual pace of intensification while this core remains this size. It is a little bit broad at the moment. Again, it's not clear what its current strength is, stronger than this morning certainly, but we'll see tonight how quickly that pace of strengthening is. And once we know that, we'll know more about what it's going to do overnight. But it may be a more gradual pace at first, perhaps quicker tomorrow once this core is able to contract a little bit because a smaller vortex is able to spin up 
more quickly. And we can get an idea of how this might happen on the HWARF, which shows the structure as of 1 p.m. Central Time here with that strong wind on the east side and wrapping around the north side, very consistent with recon aircraft observations. And you see that over time, that forms a more complete ring of purple here, hurricane force winds all the way around, and we start to get that pressure to fall and the winds to come up. And by tomorrow morning, we may have a slightly more compact donut of wind here. And at this point, we could even see a more rapid burst of intensification once the eye has contracted to some sort of critical size here. And at this point, this is likely to become at least a category three hurricane on approach to the Texas and Louisiana coastline. You can see that here on the H wharf, what could be a realistic depiction of Laura late on Wednesday evening, this would be 7 p.m. Central Time on Wednesday with a category three or four Laura sitting offshore. And uh, this has again been a consistent trend on a lot of the modeling and the environment has been expected to be favorable for something like this for a couple of days now. And it's clear that Laura is going to be quite strong. Exactly how strong, you know, could be plus or minus 10, 15, 20 knots. It's really not going to matter too much in the sense that we're expecting major life-threatening impacts no matter what the exact intensity is, whether it's a Cat 3, Cat 4, you know, at this point, there's going to be a lot of surge coming into the coastline because of this wind field. You can see how large this is. Everything in green here on the model is tropical storm force or stronger 40 mile per hour winds, and everything in purple is over hurricane force. So you can see a large area of very strong damaging winds is going to come ashore, and the zone of storm surge extends even farther east than that, all the way down the Louisiana coastline, east of where the center comes ashore. Now, as far as the track here, you can see that on this particular H wharf run, it brings it in near the Texas Louisiana border. And a lot of model guidance has really kind of honed in on this location since last night. Yesterday, we talked about some of the model disagreement with some models indicating the chance for tracks farther west into the Houston Galveston area or even farther down the Texas coastline. There is still risk of a shift directly over Houston Galveston, but as far as tracks farther to the left, we have seen some of those farthest left models come more into alignment with the other guidance today. This is the European ensemble from this morning, which was yesterday over here, now shifted more just to the east of Galveston Bay, which is right here on the map. And this is coming more in line now with other models, which are all into the Southwest Louisiana, Northeast Texas, right near the state border kind of region. And it's really in here that the landfall is likely to take place. Now, as far as the short term motion of this at the exact moment, the storm is moving just a little bit. It appears to the north of this 25 latitude 90 west point. And this is an interesting benchmark to track because a lot of the solutions that were coming all the way into this part of Texas here were at or south of this point. And for the moment, it looks like the storm is about to head north of there. So when you're looking at forecasts like the European Ensemble, it appears that this eastern half of the solutions may be more like what happens in reality compared to the leftward set. So Although we can't rule out a direct hit farther down the Texas coastline, it's looking more and more likely that this is going to be near or east of Galveston Bay, not west of Galveston Bay. But again, can't guarantee it. A shift of 50 miles could mean a lot here. And there is wiggle room. You can never pin down the landfall to the precise mile. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that the eye could be a large feature. And if we have a wide eye wall, translate that on shore and a wide area of the coastline gets the worst winds. And so don't focus on just the exact landfall point here as a, a wide area could still end up impacting places like Houston Galveston, even if the storm is a little bit to the east. If you're in Houston Galveston, watching any kind of northward wobble is good news for you, but you should be preparing as if you're getting a direct hit. You can't assume you're not going to have a direct hit. We don't know things to that level of precision. If we look at the official forecast here, we can see that that track is continuing now just a little bit shifted left from yesterday. We did have a correction in the strength of the ridge to the north of Laura. We talked about some of the observed data last night indicating that the models had the ridge a little bit too weak. And we did indeed see a little bit of a westward shift 
in the tracks closer to that state border that I talked about. So instead of everything being focused here, now it's a little bit more focused here. So we have seen a track shift a little bit closer to the Houston Galveston area and Port Arthur. Uh, and it looks like for the moment, most solutions are steady into this region like we just talked about in it. But again, though, there's still, you can see the width of this cone, some wiggle room here. So assume that the eye could come ashore anywhere within this cone and bring you the worst wind and storm surge impacts. But keep in mind, dangerous weather will occur well outside of this cone as this could have a larger core with it and especially the storm surge into low-lying areas even as far east as the mouth of the Mississippi River in Louisiana will be possible. So do keep that in mind. Here's the peak surge forecast here, anywhere between seven and 13 feet forecast at a maximum in Louisiana and lower amounts in Galveston Bay. Though of course, if the track happens to be more over or just west of Galveston Bay, these values will come up significantly. So be prepared for the potential of inundation there. Know if you're in evacuation zone and leave if you're told do, to do so by local officials. And again, we could even have flooding as far east as Mississippi due to the strong southerly, wa southerly wind pushing water on shore even well east of the storm. And of course, we'll be worried about inland flooding as well. This is a hurricane that's going to be dumping rain. It will fortunately be moving fairly quickly. This is not a Harvey. This is not going to be stalling here and dumping five feet of rain, but it is going to be dropping several inches. And of course, flash flooding will be a concern along this swath. Uh, especially near and east of the landfall point, but also to a certain extent west of the landfall point as well. And keep in mind with that brisk motion, we are also going to see wind impacts even inland of the landfall point as the center will be moving briskly. And so inland areas of eastern Texas, Louisiana and Arkansas, and perhaps southeastern Oklahoma may see strong winds, power outages and tree damage and perhaps, you know, things of like trees falling onto homes have to be aware of that even if you're away from the coastline as this will be moving briskly inland and will not have a chance to weaken before it gets to a couple hundred miles away from the coast. So again, remember this is also happening outside the cone too. You see the cone at this width, but tropical storm force wind you can see has strong probabilities above 30% even well outside that cone. So if you're in the central Texas coastline and southeast Louisiana, prepare for adverse conditions. Pay attention to your local NWS office for details on what to expect in your particular region and heed the advice of your local officials about evacuations if you're in a flood prone area. Storm surge is by far the most dangerous thing when it comes to storms like this. So do stay safe, be prepared, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching.